Hey everybody, this is Greg Gossett from Gossett Trading and Mentoring, and today is Sunday, May 19th, 2024. Hey, I hope you're doing well. I appreciate you coming to my weekend review podcast. Uh, uh, today is Sunday, as I just mentioned, and I just got, I'm just recording the video now. I actually recorded this podcast yesterday morning. I got up early because I wanted to get it out early. And when I got done recording, I uploaded it to video, and I thought, oh, I think that was a really good podcast. I think that was helpful, some good teaching moments. And then I uh, played it on YouTube to make sure everything was okay. And to my horror, I had the mute button on the entire time. And I just wanted to cry, and I wanted to laugh at the same time. And then I had things to do uh, yesterday, so I couldn't. I couldn't do it, so I'm doing it today, so my apologies. But uh, like I said, thank you for coming to my podcast, and uh, I hope it's going to be helpful for you today. Um, and I hope you had a good week trading last week. And uh, here is the format for today's podcast. So first of all, we're going to run the U.S. legal disclaimer. Secondly, we're going to come back. We're going to take a look at all the trades that I made last week, uh, all, the, all my swing trades, both on the daily and the weekly time frames. I'm going to talk about when I entered, why I entered, what the setup was, what the uh, confluences and combinations of indicators were, and then most importantly, how I am going to manage the trades going forward. You know, in trading, it's very important that you have a plan from the very start, as soon as you enter, and that you know exactly what you're going to do, regardless of what the market's going to do. Know where your end of day stops are, know, know where your emergency stops are, um, know where your trailing stop levels are. Uh, if you do it uh, the way that I do it, I take partial profits whenever the market gives me a certain amount of partial uh, profits. Make sure you have a good risk to reward ratio, all sorts of stuff. Um, but what it really comes down to is being patient, waiting for the price of your, the market that you're trading to get to, cert get to a certain level uh, that shows you that maybe that level doesn't want to go down anymore, that it's rejecting the key level and then position size sizing correctly and having a good risk to reward. Uh, because once you put that trade on, you have no control over every, anything, but you, have, and, but you have to know exactly what you're going to do regardless of what it does. So you, you need a process, and, um, and through the podcast today, I'll try to explain, you know, in the trades that we're going to look at, what my process uh, is. And uh, by the way, if, um, you know, you find any value in the podcast today, I really would appreciate it if you could hit the thumbs up button. It helps build the channel, helps keep the channel around and lets YouTube know that there's some valuable content so they can get out and they can share it. So we'll go through all the trades. After that, I'm uh, going to talk a little bit about trader psychology. It is the most important skill in trading, the ability to create a plan and then follow that plan. That's really all there is to it. And that's why I always like to spend a few minutes per podcast on it. After that, I have gone down through my master watch list, both on the daily and the weekly time frames, and I have identified some trades next week uh, that I'm interested in. They're not at the levels that they need to be. If they were, I probably would have already taken the trade, but it's important for me on the weekends to go through my, my master watch list and go through each market and say, you know what, if it got to this level, that would make sense because this level has this, that, and the other it has a good risk to reward ratio it has you know multiple support levels things like that so you want to let the trade come to you it's it on the weekend when the market's not open it's very easy to look and go boy if it got there that would make a lot of sense and then the key is not to do anything with it unless it gets there and sometimes it will not get there and it will just take off and that's okay there's many other markets that will get to the location uh, that uh, would make sense for us, all right? So um, I will go through, I'll highlight uh, the potentials for next week and what I'm thinking and where they need to get to. So I hope it's gonna be helpful and uh, who knows, maybe this podcast will be even better than my silent podcast that I recorded yesterday. I hope so, I hope so. Uh, so hang tight for about 40 seconds and I will be right back. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Please carefully read and or listen to the U.S. government required disclaimer before watching this video or live stream broadcast. 
The video link and disclaimer text are located in the description section of this video or live broadcast here and here. Thank you so much. All right, let's get started. Uh, first on the daily trades, uh, Home Depot. I did enter Home Depot all the way back here on the 1st of May. This was a deep dip by stock trading strategy, uh, one of my very, very favorites. And uh, with these type of strategies, deep dip by, really what that means is they're getting down to some lower levels. And a key level that a, large of, a lot of large financial institutions and savvy traders key off of is the 200 day moving average, the black line here. And during the day, uh, it was under the 200 day moving average and it closed barely above. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for some kind of rejection of a major level. Um, it could have just bounced at the 200. It, it could did do what it did, which was go underneath it during the day and then close back above, or it could have closed under and then closed back over. But this is a perfect example of being patient, waiting for a key level to be triggered and rejected and uh, that's where I entered. I entered at 331.80. Now my end of day stop is simply going to be a close below the 200 day moving average. That's my end of day stop. And look how close it is to there. I mean, the next day it had it just closed right underneath, I'd simply get out of the trade uh, for a small loss. Um, uh, now I, I always have to be open to the possibility that it really is going to go down large and that's what this line is down here. This is my two ATR stop. This is my emergency stop here. I wait for the end of the day to see if it closes above or below. Uh, but in the worst case scenario, if it just went, you know, barreling down, if it ever got to my uh, two uh, ATR emergency stop, then I'm completely out of the trade immediately, whether it's any, any point during the day not at the close and uh so uh but the key level here is that it rejected the 200 day moving average i have a very good risk to reward ratio if it closes under the 200 day moving average now the orange line up here this is my trailing stop level if the price gets to that level now i go into trailing stop mode which just means that once i go into trailing stop mode if i get a close below a previous bar's low i simply get out of half of the position okay and that did happen a few days later but the 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 uh, position size incorrectly based upon the volatility the end of day stop the emergency stop the trailing stop level these are all defensive moves really they're all if if things go against me really right stops or close below previous bars low that's going against me so those are defensive and you definitely need to be defensive but I also like to be offensive as well. And the way to be offensive, the way that I do it is I take partial profits. If it moves the value of 0.45 ATRs, right now that value is 284, from the previous bar's close. So the current price right now is 344.21. I'll take 344.21. I'll add 284 to it. That will be my first profit target on Monday. I'll take my first profit target, add that 284 to it again. That will be my second profit target. I'll take the second profit target, add that 284 to it again. That will be my third profit target. So I have three profit targets every single day. And if I do get to that profit target, then I just take off 10% of the remaining shares that I have left. So it's very important for me to play offense and defense. So let's revisit the trade. Reject Intraday rejection of the 200-day moving average. I get long. Uh, I position size based upon volatility. I place my emergency stop two ATRs below. If my end of day stop simply a close below the 200, 1.5 ATR trailing stop level hitter. Next day goes up, closes above the 200, keeps me in the trade. Not enough for a profit target. Next day up strongly. I actually took off two profit targets on that particular day, which a lot of benefits to that one. I lock in some profits. The market can't take that away from me anymore. I've reduced my position size. So the, 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 the stress of the trade becomes less as you take off uh, a, a portion of your position, right? That seems natural and normal, right? Um, you can probably relate to that. Um, but the real key to that is that the less stress you the less stressed you are about the trade, the more likely you're going to follow the plan that you set out. There's a lot of psychological things going there. Um, so uh, anyway, so I hit this, hit those two profit targets there. I am at trailing stop mode. 
which means now in the future, if I get a close below a previous bar's low, I'll get out of half. Well, that happened here on the 8th. It did close below the previous bar's low. Um, and I locked in a gain of 2.19%, but I still have half of the remaining shares. Next day, moved up strongly again. I hit another two profit targets, which was nice. Keep reducing the position size. Then we had this down move. And then uh, we had another up move here where I took another profit target off. And then we've had a bit of a down move. But the remaining shares that I have on Home Depot, the remaining, yeah, the remaining shares that I have on Home Depot, up nicely, up 3.61%. But it's a great example of being patient, waiting for price to come down to a major level and reject it that has a good risk to reward ratio and has some nice upside potential. And that's exactly what happened. So remaining shares up 3.61%. Uh, Microsoft. All right. Microsoft strategy here is called a abandoned baby, a bullish abandoned baby. And if you'd like to learn more about abandoned babies or island reversals, they're very similar. I do have a video uh, on my YouTube channel. Just look for abandoned babies, island reversals. And that's a great video that will explain to you in detail kind of what the rules are. But essentially, uh, look at the highlighted blue bar here. What happened the previous day is we gapped down. So sentiment was very bearish to the downside. And then the very next day we gap up. So we, sentiment went from very bearish to very bullish in a short amount of time. When this happens, in my experience, about 70% of the time, you will see price drift upward. And that's exactly what happened. Now with these particular trades, I have a little different profit and loss strategy. They're very simple. Um, well, I guess I should say when it came back and closed the gap, you see it gap down, gapped up, but when it came down and closed the gap, that was my buy area or buy uh, entry level at $400.10. So at this point, I place a two ATR stop if I'm wrong, and I place a four ATR profit target. So it's very important in trading that you, when you're right, you make more than when you're wrong in this you know, by default, this does it. 70% of the time, this particular trade is going to go my way, and I'm and you know, I would make four ATRs. About 30% of the time, I'm going to be wrong and lose two ATRs. Well, that's a pretty good proposition. That is called an edge. I'm gonna I win more than I lose, and when I win, I win more than when I lose. Make sense? So this is my profit target. This is my stop loss. Uh, not quite to my profit target yet, but the current. Um, position right now up nicely, up 4.81%. Let's go to McDonald's. McDonald's. Okay, why did I enter McDonald's? Different trading strategy here um, from the last two. This is called a fair value gap. Now, a fair value gap, this is something uh, des developed by ICT. You can check out ICT on YouTube. Uh, that's where I learned about it. And if I've incorporated in my trading, very, very helpful. But basically, um, a fair value gap is where you have uh, lows followed by more lows, and then you have a change in market structure. Well, the change in market structure comes when you take out the high of the, the first pivot, the, the, the first pivot uh, high. You can see this pivot. This bar here, we went low, low. This bar here took out this pivot, now changed the market structure to bullish, and it rallied back up. Well, there's something called the fair value gap, and it's uh, we'll call this bar one, two, three. It's it's the high of bar one, the low of bar three, and you can see I, I've made this highlighted blue area. That this entire thing here is a fair value gap. I guess I not to confuse everyone. But yeah, that's the entire fair value gap here. And my idea was when it came back into this fair value gap, I wanted to buy. You know, when you change market structure to the upside, a strange thing happens. Almost always as soon as you change to the upside, it will pull back. But that's the perfect time to buy it. When it's changed to an upside, you get that first um, counter move, counter trend move back against you. And then when you... A lot of time when you get into this fair, fair value gap, then you'll start moving up. And that's exactly what happened. I got long here on the 8th of May when we rejected the bottom of the fair value gap and 
triggered a V1. Uh, I use V1s and V2s quite a bit. If you'd like to learn more about them, again, I have a YouTube video on that, V1s, V2s, but they're a big part of my trading, and they and when they happen, they help the the possible success of any trade. doesn't mean it has to be a positive trade, but it, it does help the trade quite a bit. And so that's what happened. We came into this bullish fair value gap where likely it was going to bounce, and we also had a V1. So I got long here, 268.30. Um, I place my emergency stop as always two ATRs below and then my end of day stop is simply a close below these lows because if we close below these lows then we would change the structure of the mar this market back to a down downtrend instead of just a dip in an uptrend. So I got long here 268.30 1.5 ATR trailing stop level above as always next day it didn't do anything. And then the next day we had a huge move up where I hit uh, two profit targets, maybe three. I can't remember. But again, what happens there, I take off uh, a portion of the position, lock that in, reduce my position size, reduce my, reduce my overall risk on the market. And again, it makes it just easier to follow the process because now I have fewer shares. Next day went up a little bit, came down, came down. See how it bounced right again when it got to the uh, bullish fair value gap? Moved up again, took some profits here. Then the last few days uh, down a little bit. But um, did I mention here? Yes, or maybe no. Here, because I got I got to my trailing stop level, then here I have my first close below the previous bar's low. I sell half of the remaining shares, right? Whenever that happens. So I sold half of the remaining shares, then, then a move up, took some more profits off. And then right now the remaining shares on McDonald's um, up 1.5%. So pretty good trade so far. And then Adobe. Okay, Adobe, if you listen to my podcast last week, I identified what I was looking for on Adobe right here at about 468.14, which is where I entered the trade. So why did I enter the trade? Well, um, do you see the trend line here that we had we broke the trend line to the upside but very often when you break trend to the upside you're going to pull back and kind of retest that trend line it didn't quite do it but this red bar here is called an order block it's the lowest close before you have a structure change to the upside um, very often the high of that order block will hold and um, then we had this big up bar here and I last week I said, you know, this big up bar here, likely if it comes back down to test that halfway, it will hold. And that's why I entered because it, it came back to retest the trend line. It got right to halfway, which, which I thought would hold. It's inside the bullish um, order block. And so I did get long intraday here at 468.14. Um, right near the very bottom rally the rest of the day up. And then we had another big day up on Wednesday, so I did take some profits there. I'm also at trailing stop level, um, so if I now get a close below a previous bar's low, I'll get out of half. But this particular trade doing well, up 3.20%. And then, so those are the four open trades, and then the close trade was TLT. Again, this was another one of those uh, bullish abandoned babies. Here we had a gap down, followed immediately by a gap up. It came back and filled the gap. I got long 88.60. I placed my two ATR uh, stop below. I placed my four ATR profit target above. And uh, after I entered, it moved sideways for a while, had a couple days down. I was like, oh, this doesn't look good. I may get to my stop loss, but turned it around. And then on Wednesday, got right up to my profit target, perfectly up 3.93%. So re uh, recap on the daily trades, Home Depot remaining shares up 3.61%, Microsoft up 4.81%, McDonald's, geez, up 1.5%, Adobe up 3.2%, and then TLT up 3.93%. So the daily trade's looking good. I did enter one weekly trade on uh, Friday. Uh, Friday, uh, weekly bars close on Friday. So if I trade weekly bars, I, I only trade on Friday. And uh, this is IBB. 
the iShares uh, NASDAQ biotechnology stock. Um, the highlighted blue bar here, here is the, the highest up bar before market structure break to the downside. So therefore the bottom of that bar will be some significant resistance. And then in addition to that, we came and we re intra week rejected this 200 day moving average. So we went above it uh, during the week, but we closed below it. So now that 200 is um, resistance above me. So I am short. I'm short here exactly 136.69, which was the closing price, so it's totally even. Uh, I placed my two ATR emergency stop above because that's uh, I'm short, so I place it above. My end of week stop is simply going to be a close above the 200-day moving average. And if it closes above the 200-day moving average, I'll simply get out for a loss, 1.5 ATRs below me. Uh, so we'll see what happens with this trade. So. I um, hope that was helpful uh, for you to uh, see the, the trades uh, that I have. And uh, by the way, if, you know, if you're interested in kind of elevating your, your, your trading, if you'd like to learn more about how I trade, I do teach private one-on-one -on -one lessons in the evening time via Skype. I love to teach. I have taught students from all over the world, from absolute beginners all the way up to the hedge fund level and everywhere in between. But um, you know, I, I teach all of the, the trading strategies that you see me use here. I teach you step by step. By the time you're done, uh, you're going to know exactly what to do in any situation. And you really will be a great trader uh, or a better trader for sure. It will improve your trading. You're going to learn a lot of things. I have been trading for almost 29 years now, and I've gone through all sorts of markets, all sorts of stuff. And I'm always learning, always trying to improve my trading, and uh, I will share all that knowledge with you. So if you're interested, my email is in the link in this description. And I have another option too. I have a great online um, course, uh, the Deep Dip Buy course, which I've talked about here uh, today on some of the trades I have. It's available at udemy.com. It's very inexpensive, it's very good, and the link is in the description. So those are the uh, current trades that I have both daily and weekly. Let's talk a little bit about trader psychology. Uh, this is from Stephen Burns. Stephen Burns is a great author. He's a great trader. He was a mentor of mine. I learned many things from Steve. You can follow Steve at S. Joseph Burns over on Twitter. And uh, I highly, highly recommend you do. He has great content. And let's see what Steve has to say today. Focus on studying the trading skills of patience and control. Well, not sounds like me right that's what i say in every single podcast the greatest skill in trading is the ability to create a plan and follow the plan without letting your emotions get amplified and get you off track having the proper position size will help with help you with that greatly uh, taking off partial profits playing offense uh, like i do helps with that greatly but you could have the best trading plan in the world, but if you don't follow it, it's not going to do any good for you. So that's why I keep saying, get yourself a process, learn a process, and then follow that process. And that comes down to your emotions. Focus on studying the trading skills of patience and self-control. You have to have them, everyone. If you don't have them, it's going to be a rocky road. It's going to be a rocky road. So, um, it's just something you have to do. And in my experience, the best way to do that is to trade small. That will help you follow your plan. You have to follow your plan in the long run in order for things to work. That's really what it comes down to. So focus on studying the trading skills of patience and, and control. It's the most important. Everyone thinks of the skill in trading of chart reading. Yeah, it's important. It's not that hard. But what's hard is to follow the plan that you set out. It's just like a diet, right? You know it's you know to lose weight. Hey, I need to exercise, eat less, eat better foods. Right there, you have the answer, but it's hard to do, right? It's the same thing in trading. So anyway, thank you very much, Steve. Please follow Steve over at S. Joseph Burns. Okay, let's get on to what I am looking at next week for some potential trades. <laughs>